you everyone for joining the Cosmos SDK community call. It is summer, so it is a bit of a light one. I think a lot of us, a lot of people are on their summer breaks. Kids are out of school. And so this is the time to take that time and spend time with family. Um, but for the rest of us, we're here hustling, building, and still having fun in the crypto space. So today, I um, wanted to give you guys an update on where we are with uh, the release. Um, so this is the 52 release, uh, V2. Um, we've already released one blog post about the LTS, so I also wanted to touch on that, um, just so everyone um, is aware of it, and some ideas that we, and then some ideas that we've been discussing for post-release. Um, so staking, distribution, upgrade, bank, um, and also something like quite controversial. I just wanted to like share it with you guys and hear your thoughts. So first and foremost. Um, starting out with Olympus. Olympus is the code name for our next release. And we are currently doing QA and audits. So we are working with AuditSec to audit components of the, of the release. Um, they've been auditing every month since March. So a lot of the code that is gonna be in 52 has already been going through audits. Um, and we've been fixing them, fixing as bugs arrive. Um, we're aiming to have an alpha tag either tomorrow or early next week. And this alpha tag is basically just finalizing um, some changes so we can already start integrating with IBC. Um, we've already commenced the changes with IBC. Um, and with a lot of the changes that we want to assist or lead with IBC and WASMD is not only for an upgrade to 52, but is, an, is preparing their code bases for our V2. Um, and V2 we've been working on for a while. We're coming to fruition on it. Um, we're coming to the end. We're writing tests. We're making its future compatible with um, existing base app. Um, and that code, um, we should, there's already teams integrating it. So Bear Chain is integrating, we're integrating it and working with it. We're talking with Osmosis and DYDX about possibly um, using them as testing grounds. Um, just their code bases in order to like test the v2 so we can do benchmarking and we can do um further testing just so we make sure that once we release it there aren't bugs um and so with the 52 release um like i mentioned alpha in the next couple of days um qa is ongoing um so ourselves and the zondex team are collaborating to work um work on the uh qa process um so we'll, Robert asked, when do you think uh, we will have a first version of Cosmos and ready for Olympus? So the moment I am done at least doing a, a small cleanup on the IBC repo. Um, so for V2, the biggest change that um, is coming is basically with V2, you, you can't use SDK.context. Um, I know it's the, the hack, the global thing that we've all loved, we've all come to love. But because of the V2's um, design around um, avoiding globals and also making everything a single writer, uh, multi-reader design, then due to concurrency constraints around um, SDK context, we wanted to like, move away from it. Um, also, the whole premise of like the V2 design is to avoid um, having to use mutexes everywhere that uh, we've all discovered is um, the current store and base app are using mutexes left and right. Um, and so we're able to get rid of a lot of that. Um, and so working with IBC on that, um, and then after that should go to Wasm. Wasm will be a lot faster. Wasm D will be a lot faster. I'm hoping that maybe in uh, two weeks, um, we have the PRs ready on all the repos for dropping SDK context and potentially upgrading to 52. Um, I think it is plausible. Um, the changes primarily with V2, uh, 52 are around um, some API changes. Um, and there's not so much like business logic changes as most of the team, we've been very focused on V2 storage and on V2 of the core. Um, so hopefully, um, ideally by end of August, we're able to have a nightly build of the interchain stack, um, i.e. WASM, IBC, SDK, and, cause, and Comet BFT V1. Um, working in CI, so um, we can already start testing with test nets and so on. Um, on the second part with test nets, uh, we do have a DevOps engineer joining, um, and so they will be helping and assisting running long-lived test nets for the interchain stack. And so they're 
we will have a testnet that uh, ideally we can get wallets and integrators of all of all the of all of the entire stack using it so we can really test and make sure everything's working in accordance um for the v2 stuff um something super exciting is uh, we're also working with gordian um, from strangelove on getting v2 working with their uh implementation of um re-implementation of a consensus engine um so that's super exciting um it's kind of like the first test of v2 working with something that is not comet bft um so that's super super exciting um shout out to strangelove um mark and team um for uh, leading that effort um any questions on the 52 stuff um before diving into just a uh just a refresher on the LTS blog post. Awesome. So with uh, recently we released the blog post, um, let me quickly dig it up. By the way, when you say V2, you refer to the server V2 or, or yeah. something else? Okay. Uh, no, it is that. Um, so we're skipping V1, um, or we're following in the footsteps of ABCI++. So we could call this Cosmos SDK++ if we wanted to, um, but uh, I'm not a fan of the++, and we're just going straight to V2, which ABCI was meant to be called. Um, ABCI++ was meant to be called. Um, so yeah, diving into LTS. So the guarantee that we're making um, is that 52 um, will have, uh, and the reason why it's taking slightly longer, we just want to make sure that APIs are those that we can maintain for the next two years. So once you upgrade to 52, you have a guarantee from us that we will be backporting uh, bug fixes, security, and um, possibly features, some features to the 52 line for the next two years. Um, this is slightly different than what we've been doing in the past. In the past for 50, 47 and before, what we've been doing essentially is, um, since our goal is every six months to have a major release, basically every year the the, the oldest, uh, so if we release 46, then by the time 50 comes out, which is which ideally is in one year of 46, 46 would be deprecated. Here we're changing it um, and making a guarantee for 52 for the next two years. Once we pass those 52, uh, once we pass those uh, 52 years or two years, um, we will see where the we we'll see where the ecosystem is, um, and see if we need to further maintain it, help teams upgrade, um, and so we'll be able to reassess if there needs to be a longer um, LTS um, for 52. Now V2, V2 is like I said, a complete redesign. We're making a guarantee around V2 and the APIs for the next uh, three years. So if you do upgrade to V2, it has a lot of new features, a lot of new performance um, that you'll get right out of the box um, that you'll be able to like not have to upgrade um, for the next three years if you don't want to. The nice thing within V2 is since all the components are, co are compartmentalized, then you can like freely update single components without updating others. Um, we've really focused on cleaning up the dependency graph there in order to allow you to do this. So in the future, um, if Comet BFT comes out with a V2 um, and it's implementing um, Mr. Seti, Mr. Kieti, it's implementing Narwhal, it has the latest and greatest, it is the best technology in the world, um, or if Gordian does that and is the best technology in the world, then um, you'd be able to update to the new version without having to update your complete stack. Um, and so this is like the goal. Um, and so we were we are making guarantees. And really what you as a module developer have to primarily worry about is the APIs within runtime or within core. And so core v1 will also be released. We've been doing audits uh, as a team of the APIs to make sure they are in accordance with what we want to maintain for the next two to three years. And um, and so yeah, so LTS is here. Um, we've also been discussing with the Comet team. Comet is also working on an LTS uh, design and it should be coming out in the next couple of weeks 
any questions around LTS concerns, feedback? Yeah, maybe one, uh, since uh, we are coming to LTS and we had that very long discussion about, you know, dropping zero X. Uh, did you guys have uh, like another discussion <laughs> dropping zero X and calling yeah. this LTS so, so, uh, V1 or V2? <laughs> so yeah, so this is the whole premise of V2. Um, it is the core of the, of the stack, the core of the SDK going semantic version uh going to semantic versioning and so the ideal world where we would love to be in as the maintainers um, of the sdk um, binary and zondex is that everyone once v2 is released once it's tested everyone's like we want to we want to use the latest and greatest we want to be the fastest chain out there we're going to migrate to v2 right away and um long-term support um yeah yeah and, but uh I'm talking here uh, about the, like the whole SDK package. It's yeah, and so, 52, like, call it V2 well, as well. Well, what we want to do here with, with the SDK is, and this is kind of like the controversial part um, that I wanted to like bring up. Um, so just like uh, before I jump into the controversial part, still a proposal, so no one has to get, uh, jump out of their chairs. But um, just before we jump into that, does anyone have any questions about LTS? Okay, so controversial part, proposal um, number one. So the maintaining of the SDK has been very difficult. Um, it's been very slow um, and we've, uh, it's been very hard to get releases out in a timely manner. And this is like the whole premise of the V2 work. Um, the current, the core SDK has a lot of tech debt and this tech debt uh, we need to make backwards compatible in order to really serve all the users because we don't know what users are using because there's so many features within the main go mod cosmos sdk uh cosmos slash sdk slash uh sorry uh, github.com slash cosmos slash cosmos sdk and so the proposal that um we have is once 52 is released we want to really redefine what that package is and what we've kind of come to the conclusion of is the ideal scenario is that package is around testing. It's around testing your application and it has some utility, utilities. What does that mean for the rest of the code base, um, base app and stuff like this? With V2 coming out, we really want to push everyone to go to V2, but we have, we're committing to the LTS. But after 52, we want to move into a direction where we can actually delete base app from the SDK. We can delete server and possibly um, client v1 um, w as long as there's a new version for people to use that people are happy with. What is this really? This really enables us to move forward and not have this mountain of tech debt that is very hard to move forward on. For example, um, we've had two engineers basically spend two two weeks of engineering time each um, going into JSON encoding and proto encoding because of somehow Amino does this, proto does this. And so we've had to like debug where it is, how long it's been there and find out more details. We've had to go talk to users. We've got to go look in Comet. And so this like amount of tech that is like really slowed us down in terms of being able to be, um, be quick and be adaptable to what users need. And so in this perspective, the proposal is, um, when everyone's migrating to v2 that we can get rid of the parts of the code base that v2 is not using and so what does this mean is that potentially 54 56 whatever the next number is if it's even v1 that it will not include base app um, it will not include a lot of these um, components that were part of the v1 or the legacy way to write a application um, right now, it's still a proposal. We'll we'll write it up. I'll write it up and share it with people, and just want to get feedback on it. Um, but just kind of wanted to allow the team to really get over this hump of maintaining all this extra code that many people aren't even using. Um, for example, there's a feature with panic recovery that no one even knows exists, um, and we look through tons of code bases and we find that no one's actually using it. 
And so, but it is API breaking to remove it. And so we'd rather do that as part of V2 than um, break it in the existing um, code. So this is kind of like us asking and kind of like making hopefully the team and you guys are like um, accepting of it that we can actually like get rid of all this extra code that won't be used for the forward for moving forward in the future will be around v2 and the and the new server design and so the old server design we can just get rid of um what is it, what else does this mean it means that we want to move what are the anticipated negatives of this um that there's a hidden feature that two to three users are using that the rest of the ecosystem doesn't actually know um, and so we are working with feature compatibility for v2 and and base app and to make sure everything is there so we're already working on bringing up optimistic execution but optimistic execution we've already been able to like make it a lot cleaner than the existing design um, we've already started discussing as a team how to do parallelized execution within the new design and so there's already excitement around the new design with not having to fight what is currently in base app. Um, and so we've been talking with the Kronos team. We've been also looking at like state prefetching um, as a performance improvement um, that we can really take advantage of in the V2 design um, without the headache of base app. And so it's still a proposal. We'll write up a document and we'll kind of do a deeper dive. I think the, the biggest negative is that some users um, depend on base app for testing right now. And so we will provide alternatives and we also rely on base app for all our testing. Not all, but most um, of the integration tests, I think some unit tests, possibly some intent tests. And so even for us, we have to look at what does it mean to do that? What does it mean in refactoring our tests to do that, to get rid of base app? Um, the nice part here is the Cosmos SDK as, as a whole, um, yeah, interchain test has already moved away, so it's already like people who are using that have already moved away from it, so it's already an example of it. Um, thank you, Manif, um, or Mantis, um, Mantis, um, and um, no, I just lost my train of thought. Yeah, so so essentially, like moving away from this code, so we can really propel forward and there's already a lot of designs a lot of research that um we've been picking up on research papers and just like looking into different designs and getting rid of this maintenance burden that we have really allows us to push forward and like provide better software for everyone um so kind of wanted to share that um with people and see what people thought um anyone have any comments Yeah, I mean, hard to say, I think, because today the good thing is that um, there's this, is this one package that is, is tested uh, all together. Um, I remember like a few months ago, I was updating uh, some of the region code. I started to finish my PR, by the way, for the, for the SDK. Um, and that was, didn't work, yes, because some of those components, let's say, I think that was related to ORM, didn't work with 047 while it should work with 047. Um, so, yeah, I mean, one, um, uh, Compatibility one concern would be, is, yes, like, is a concern, yeah. I, I do, yeah, yeah. I how, do how, this, sorry, how this multiple versions, yes, will work together. Yeah, so I do agree. Um, and this is something that we will, we've also been like working on with the V2. And a lot of like the V2 is we we could have moved faster if we if we decided like hey we're gonna do all this breakage right away, um, and we could have been done with V2 a while ago. Um, but we wanted to make the migration to V2 as seamless as possible. I.e., the ideal scenario is in your app.go, you just have to modify a few lines after you modify some of your modules, but they're just API breaks, no state breaks, and then it should work. Um, and so instead of you having to like now import, compose the server and do all this stuff, app.go shrinks and you're able to really do it in a, in a seamless fashion. Um, so compatibility across versions is definitely a concern that we are taking very seriously because less compatibility means that upgrades will take longer for you guys. And so we don't want to break a lot of compatibility and then it takes everyone two, three, four months to upgrade. 
uh, also a question like related to this V2 and you know those changes. Um, am I correct saying that if we use the deep inject, then all this uh, base app dependency will be solved automatically? Yeah. Yep. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, so from Germund, um, I apologize if I said your name incorrectly. Um, he said that it sounds like a really good thing on the surface, but would need to dive into any write ups details to get a clearer picture. 100%. Right now, it's mainly a proposal and just seeing what it would take. And so we will be doing write ups before we make a final decision on it. Um, and so, but I can say that the, the team is like already got pretty excited about the opportunity to not have to maintain a bunch of legacy code um, and like fight with it and then have to dive in and we need to go talk to the original authors on like why this was written and we have to dig them up and then there's a high probability they don't know why it's written and it's not documented. Um, and so the team's already really excited about the opportunity to um, not necessarily start fresh, but get rid of the mountain of uh, tech debt um, and as part of our maintenance um, burden. Awesome. Any any questions? Um, I guess like I'll, we'll do a write up and then we'll share it with the community and then we would love to hear, have feedback. Um, so as the next thing kind of like we've just started ideating um, so nothing's uh, concrete, but as we are moving to closer to the release of 52, um, it's starting to clear um, dev schedules, so dev engineering time. And so as part of the 2024 roadmap, we had the we had a lot of module refactors. And so we've already been doing um, some. So the Mint module recently got a refactor, allowing you guys to really define what inflation means instead of just saying, um, how and how tokens get minted, you can design it based off staking tokens, users, what, really whatever you want. Um, and so in that spirit, um, as part of the 2024 roadmap, we've also had uh, two modules that everyone um, loves, the staking module and the distribution module. Um, I know the, the team over at, at Strangelove really, really enjoyed the staking module <laughs> and fighting with it. Um, but we we just want to like make it simpler and so a lot of the um some of the designs we've been thinking about is how to redesign staking and distribution um and so we will we will start commencing a working group um in the next couple of weeks possibly early september around a new staking module um or potentially like a generic staking module. So this is something uh, a DTA opened an issue on ages ago and we've been discussing with a few teams around just having a module that you can plug in your Sybil resistance mechanism, i.e. POA, you can plug in proof of stake, you can plug in different designs, um, delegate proof of stake, proof of stake, um, possibly proof of work um, into the module and then the module just handles like VALS hit updates and, and, to, and the communication to comment um, and storage of the validator set. And so in this design, we've also um, been discussing or want to discuss with accountants or lawyers um, and possibly investors to figure out what are, the, what are their biggest hurdles for proof of stake or staking um, or interacting with chains so we can learn how to better design and design a proof of stake module from, uh, from the ground up with those things in mind as early on when this staking module was designed the regulatory like landscape was unknown at the time and how it would be um, interpreted and so now it's time to take all the learnings we've had and really do the implementation so um, i'll be posting in a couple channels and messaging um, and posting on twitter about the working group so we can really commence that and hopefully get a design fairly quickly and um, there should be engineers already free to work on that um, by the time we get the implement by the time we get the design done. Um, as a show of hands, would is there anyone here who would love to participate in that work? I already take note of that. All right. Hi, Marco. Um, hey. I'm, I'm currently working on uh, restaking 
program. So basically, we have multiple assets for staking and distribution. So have you considered a general, generalized uh, token system uh, for staking? I mean, multiple assets instead of a single asset. So this, so I think the hard part with, um, so th this has come up. So the, a few of us have discussed like multiple assets. I think there's like a, a recent paper that came out um, around it as well. And um, we've discussed it. We haven't come to a conclusion on which direction to go for the generic or the default staking module. Um, primarily, it's very hard to, and this is kind of why it's like doing like a plugin based system with a generic staking module is somewhat appealing because it gives you a simple default out of the box but building something more complex is always hard because every chain has its own custom economic design and own custom security design um or whatever um whatever they really want to design and so saying i think the mistake that we made or cosmos made in general was making a very opinionated staking module um and this staking module that we have today was actually designed for the cosmos hub but it kind of became the default of the ecosystem which everyone kind of adopted and i think the primitives that it adopted were potentially good or bad for the cosmos hub um i don't have a preference on which 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 way you point but for other chains i, I think it was actually not a good design and so here is the question for us that we are poised with is like how to design something generic that allows people to build more on top without limiting them to what is today in the module today in the staking distribution module it's very hard to extend i think like like reese i think you've run into this and in, when writing a poa module using the staking module it's very hard to extend there's so many unknowns um the testing like there's random errors that are returned but like the code never gets hit so like why is the error returned um there's like stuff like this there's so many unknowns in the current staking modules that's very hard to like build on top forcing everyone to actually rewrite their own staking module or to rewrite the modules from the ground up and so i think the best thing that we can do is provide something that is generic enough for people to extend and build on top of without forcing them in a single direction um, instead of saying like we're going to build liquid staking for everyone we're going to build multi-asset staking for everyone and then the staking module that we end up developing becomes a module with a lot of feature flags because it's supporting many different things um so that's like the the current thought i mean that's just what like my opinion um but i think once we start our staking working group if there's alignment across the whole ecosystem on how it should be designed and what the economic models should be, then we can work on implementing that as well. Oh, okay. Uh, if the staking module and the distribution module is generic enough, maybe we could we could introduce it much as a staking easy. Yeah. Exactly. So it's like, what is what are the fundamentals or um i keep coming to the the meme of like the duck chasing the guy saying like starting from first principles and like what are the first principles but providing a good foundation for staking and distribution because in reality i think 90 percent or even 100 percent of people on this call um we've all written a proof of stake system in a smart contract or in a module so we've all had the experience of writing it and it's not insanely complex build it the the cosmos sdk staking modules is quite complex to understand because it was written early before many of us had that experience and back then it was one of the first staking proof of stake systems in existence um and so it had a lot of shortcomings but now it's like from our learnings we can really design something from the ground up that really provides a good foundation without having to make decisions for the end user. Um, I think like um, Rollkit, um, I know it's like in the middle of my screen, but like um, Rollkit's a good example. It's like they had to fork staking in order to make it um, like non-validator based because it's like they don't have validators, it's a centralized sequencer. And so um, how do we make something generic enough that it's like 
teams don't always have to fork the staking module or rewrite the staking module. They can use what's there, but then also add a plugin or add a simple civil resistance mechanism on top if they even want one without having to like rewrite it or copy the code and delete a bunch of code and all this stuff. So uh, Brendan says, uh, probably not answerable in this call, but have you considered using V2 as an opportunity for a full rebrand to either uh, due to either confusion or negative sentiment around Cosmos? So you would post about SD, asterisk, 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 S, SDK on Twitter, um, getting into V, uh, getting into semantic versioning branding can also be confusing or negative, which we have found with DYDX V4. We're trying to get away from using V4. Um, so we did have this thought, and we are discussing it with um, with the ICF, with Nico. Um, I've been slow to get back to him. But essentially, what we thought of actually doing was to take the Cosmos SDK, and um, and then Mantis says, could do the opposite of Cosmos and call it, could call it Terra. Um, we'll call it Phoenix. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, but well, we had the idea of taking the V2 work and branding it under a different name because the idea with the V2 was like to abstract like the SDK, abstract the Cosmos SDK out. But then what the Cosmos SDK is per se is runtime and everything above runtime. And so what so runtime is what composes the server and the modules. And so what the Cosmos SDK is is runtime and the modules when V2 would be something else. Um, so it could be rebranded into like Interchain SDK or uh, OWL SDK. I don't know, I have a tower next to me. Um, um, and, and then it's like V2 is like this standalone thing that has an API to communicate to different runtimes. And so actually what we were just discussing in our team call right before this was what what does this API look like to the, to communicate to different runtimes to a Rust runtime to to communicate directly to an EVM, MoVM, SVM, um, and then also the Go runtime or quote unquote the Cosmos SDK. So I think it's like we have been thinking about this, and I think it's just a matter of uh, sitting down and talking with Nico um, to get the the ICF spy in. Um, the ICF uh, is funding the current development of the Cosmos SDK. So we need to work together. We can't just be a, a solo team just saying like, we're going to do this and whether you like it or not. Um, but I think like Nico has an amazing head for marketing and so, and branding. And so I really want to um, get his feedback and just make sure we're all aligned on it. So it might happen. So I'm not saying it won't happen, um, but it might. Awesome. Any other questions? Or um, now, and I would love to open the floor for questions, feedback. Also, if you have questions or issues that you'd like to discuss with the SDK or bring up that need to be solved, um, that you think need to be solved within the next release, would love to hear them. Um, so we're just aware of them and possibly fix them. Anyone have any issues or questions about how to use the SDK or anyone can also ask just about the ecosystem too. Question for end of call. DX for unbound validator not present in non RSM ICS tags. Any plans to add it? Oh, yes. Uh, unbound validator. Yes. Um, there, this is like what we do want to add to staking. Um, but uh, yeah, we just haven't had a moment and we really wanted to focus on getting the, the core part. The question here is like, will it be part of staking V2 um, or will we add it to the current staking module? Um, we can discuss that in the working group on like how urgent people feel it is. Um, as a validator operator, I think it is useful instead of having to like unbond your token or if you mis mis mistakenly unbond too much token um, too much tokens, then you automatically get unbonded. So like making a better UX around that. Also making it that there is an unbonded pool instead of just like you just show up as jailed on on explorers would be useful. 
Um, so we can discuss that um, if people see a need for it to include it in the current staking module, or if people are fine to um, include it in the next staking module. Any other? Uh, I, have a, yeah. uh, I have a question about uh, account abstraction. Uh, so, what's the status for account abstraction? How far are we from supporting uh, other contracts, other uh, other accounts like uh, Solana account, Sui account, Aptos account, uh, in a Cosmos contract transaction? So do you mean um, like uh, like Solana transaction type? signing or do you mean like the oh, physical I mean, oh i mean just uh verifying a signature signed by a solana oh. account yeah so the the current account module can actually do this so we're actually working um and with the celeste team about doing like zk accounts um and so uh gabriel we're, we're helping answer questions but also potentially might do the implementation of zk accounts and what zk accounts is is an example of an account that doesn't use the Cosmos SDK signature verification schemes, um, set P two fifty six um, K one, and so you can use BLS for verification. You can use Schnorkel. You can use Ed two five one nine. That should already be doable today. We're going to work on zk accounts. The cool, the really cool thing about zk accounts um, that I'm actually really excited about is it provides a vm less scripting language on chain and so uh like the scripting is done off chain and then on chain is verification and execution and so uh we, we we're going to be able to like, use sp1 risk zero we're already working with risk zero and stuff um to really bring different accounts of with the accounts module to do different forms of scripting but also with that different forms of verification um so we've been working with uh, we've been talking with kujira about um, they implemented passkeys in the accounts module. And so we're going to work with them to upstream that so we can get passkey support across the ecosystem. Um, and so you should be able to do like, you should be able to sign a transaction with an Aptos key um, as soon as your chain implements uh, imports account. And then you would you would have to just write an account type that um does the verification of the transaction so what this means is there's an authentication authenticate uh, method in the account and in an account you uh, write you need to implement that and then that authenticate will authenticate signature verify whatever you want to do to fa like you can do whatever you want um it's just arbitrary bytes and you do the verification and then if you say it is valid then you can execute the messages within the transaction. Um, so that's already there. I know uh, another thing, EIP 4337 has died down. Um, <laughs> the um, the pay for system. Um, so the account system, the accounts module has an automatic, um, has implemented 4337 as well. So wallets and or just front ends uh, can opt to pay for transactions that user when users are using an account. Um, and so this is not only limited to what Feedgrants was doing before. Um, you can do it directly with the account. Um, so that's also a really cool thing. Would love to see wallets um, having like a subscription model design where users pay, I know, an atom a month, and then they can get unlimited transactions or an amount of transactions. And then the wallet will like handle paying for it and everything like that. And then you can build stuff cross chain, really cool. Asmia, Atish, uh, you want to go for it? Uh, yeah. I'm a like it's been a long time. Yeah. Am I able? Yeah. You can hear you. Yeah. So, yeah. So, like, uh, from the past uh, few weeks, like, we were developing an healthy extending feature. 
actually like uh, that will help the app developers to like uh, uh, give their uh, validators or delegators to like uh, like help the uh, help on voting the proposals better for example like uh, there much like since the proposals are uh, uh, made up like uh, message based proposals so a proposal can be like a uh, uh, handled with uh, better ideas the people who are techni technically strong can vote on the uh, app side uh, technical proposals uh, and also like a few people might be like a better at uh, uh, funds management which is uh, managing the grants so can be granted for them as well like um, to vote based on the uh, proposal which is involving the message particularly like a param upgrade proposal or upgrade chain proposal to add chain. and some like a uh, money uh, like funds granting can also be like uh, uh, handled with a better better group or else like um, some better person uh, like irrespective of the validator's idea or knowledge so we can grant the people who are strong in their respective uh, positions can be like what on the proposals based on our grants so yeah this is the feature that we have developed uh, from the past few weeks uh, yeah like uh, would like to share the details in the cosmos tech group uh, and like would like to like uh, uh, would like to hear some feedback here or else there from the community. Uh, if anybody is interested, like would like to chat on uh, further on that. Awesome. Yeah, definitely useful. Odyssey, it's, it's definitely fun seeing Odyssey grow. It's have its own kind of like ecosystem and, and long tail features. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for giving me the chance. That's awesome. Anything else from anyone? Awesome, awesome. Then we can end a few minutes early. Everyone enjoy the summer. Hopefully you're not sweating like me. Um, I'm just like sitting here sweating. But uh, everyone enjoy your summer and talk to you next month. Ciao, ciao.